Well, hello. We have a lot going on today. Um, let me turn this around. Okay, so these were the tomatoes and that I got from the food bank. So I'm gonna cut out all the nasty part. And I uh, gave Bali a little wish list. I needed onion powder. So I got a big old thing of onion powder. And I got some limes and lemons and some red onions. So we're gonna make a big batch of salsa. I'm already making the Kiki's cheese sauce. I'm making some beans, but they are taking forever. And I don't know, we got a lot of the beans were from the Mylar bags from that prepper and they were um, kind of old. But in Mylar bags are supposed to keep, so I don't know if it's them or I just haven't cooked it long enough. I don't know what's going on. And I've got a few pizzas in here. One is a vegetarian, one is a pepperoni. There's one on backup. So we got it going on here. Another thing, I love the Kiki's cheese sauce, but I am gonna say that for her, um, for the Kiki's cheese sauce, I had to clean the filter. Anyway, um, Kiki's cheese sauce is, for her measurements, she does like a teaspoon of garlic powder or something and two teaspoons of I gotta move my seasoning. They're right near the dishwasher and the steam is starting to make them. Anyway, like two teaspoons of onion and a teaspoon of garlic and a teaspoon of salt and four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. But I don't do that. I do a tablespoon of everything, salt, onion, garlic. And then I do about five heaping teaspoons of nutritional yeast. And I'm telling you, I like it better, the stronger. And, and, and um, everybody else, okay, now you're choking me while I'm trying to film. And everybody else likes it better that way too. So I would say with the Kiki's cheese sauce, up your seasoning. Ooh, those look very good. Very good indeed. We did a good job and I used, I did a normal pizza crust instead of, I've been doing tortilla dough. And that also works well. This pizza turned out delicious. I could have cooked it a little less Oh, hot. Okay, I had to chew that and it was very hot. But yes, I could, could have cooked it a little less, making the crust a little more floppy. But all in all, <clears throat> it was good. Um, I am still using those canned sauces and I'm gonna use them up. But I think this summer we're gonna have a lot of tomatoes. So hopefully, no, no, shh, I'm recording. What is Dad watching? I Big Night. Oh, it's a good movie. Well, you've seen. We've had it on a few times, honey. It's a really charming movie. It is. It's charming. Only a little bit of kissing. That's all, just a couple seconds. But anyway, a little bit of profanity. <laughs> a little, a lot, it all depends on who you are. Anyway, the trick to these, now I'm sure all of you are way ahead of me on making salsa, okay? But for those of you who are newbies, I watched... A sh what did I watch? See, I watch and read so much stuff that I actually, I can't. I can't remember who or what. Did I see that? Did I watch that? Did someone show me that? But here's the thing. I watched a video. They were making salsa. And they said the trick to making salsa, I remember, because they actually saved the innards. But they took the innards 
out of the tomatoes. They said the trick to making really good salsa is take these innards out. And you can save them and make sauces from the innards. I kind of think no, because the innard is just like a tough part right here and then a lot of seeds and slime. You can make a sauce if you want. I just compost them. And I'm hoping we have a lot of tomato plants this year and I might put in some more. And I'm hoping to get a lot of canning done. Uh, I don't have hope for other stuff, but I'm hoping to get, to be able to eat some zucchini. I love sauteed zucchini when it's not too big. You gotta pick it when it's still small. And you cook it, especially the yellow zucchini, and you saute it with onions. You let the onions caramelize a little bit, and you cook it in a little bit of olive oil and butter, and real butter. You can do vegan butter, but there's something about real butter. But you can try to get some pasture raised. I don't know. I wish it was easier to find cruelty-free products, you know? Anyway, you could use olive oil, just olive oil, some garlic, or you could use vegan butter, but I just really like the butter butter. Then we have corn, and I'm hoping to get enough corn, so I'll eat zucchini and corn fresh. Maybe freeze some zucchini. And that's another thing I have to look up, you know, because you have to flash cook things, and that to me is a pain in the tookie. But I would like to freeze and can as much as I can. Um, the garden, I don't know. I'm hoping that we get some acorn squash. Is it butternut squash? I think it's butternut. Sorry, butternut squash. I really love that. And I'm hoping we get to eat a lot of fresh produce over the summer, and then I get to can enough spaghetti sauce and diced tomatoes. Well, actually, I think I'm going to make it all into spaghetti sauce. So I'm going to do try to can enough spaghetti sauce because I use that for my pizzas, my sauce, everything. Maybe I'll can a few because I do need some canned tomatoes for my minestrone because that's all I use tomatoes for minestrone minestrone and pizza and spaghetti sauce so if I can can a ton of that that cuts down on what I have to buy so we already have lots of rice and beans and lentils and all that jazz and then hopefully we'll have lots of um, tomato sauce and then I stock up on flour which I have to go get some more flour Tomorrow, I think tomorrow I'll go. I need to actually buy more white flour than I'm buying. I'm going through 25 bags, 25 pound bags of white flour really fast because I'm making the sourdough and I'm making the pizza and the tortillas and I'm not doing a lot of whole wheat, which maybe I should shift to that again because I have a ton of whole wheat flour. So we just stock up on those things and then we grow and can as much as we can or freeze. And then we go to Winco and we stock up on all the things that we can't grow or can or freeze or buy over here in bulk. You know, like gluten. Um, I, I am gonna get some of my cream of mushroom I don't want to make it. I looked up the recipe. I'm too lazy. I don't want to make it. I'm making everything. I don't want to make it. And I love having it on hand because sometimes I love to make casseroles. And cream of mushroom is like that all around soup base that you can, oh, there's a gravy. There's like a sausage gravy I make, which you can make vegetarian. So casseroles and gravies and all kinds of stuff with that. Speaking of, I had, I bought a huge amount of bulk. This is um, not pickles. This is an old pickle jar that I didn't get the thing off. But this is powdered chicken gravy. 
and I cooked it yesterday. I really wanted mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay, okay, stop arguing. And oh, these guys, they're arguing about the dishes I cook. Anyway, I tried it and I could, at first it was too watery, then it was too thick and it tasted bitter. And I don't know if it's just old, like it doesn't last that long. Cause I used to like it. I used to love it. And I used to just cook it up with a little water and I kind of guess at it all the time. And I do just fine and I really enjoyed it. But this time I could not get it figured out. And it tasted so bitter. And, and just like all the chemicals. And I think that's what happens as you're cooking more and more from just whole foods, even if it's meat or cheese, those are barely processed. I'm not saying they're that great for you, but they're barely processed. But if everything else is like made from flour, grains, produce, and you're making it all from scratch, what happens is that your taste buds start to cleanse and they change and they start getting used to all these fresh flavors. And so then when you eat something highly processed, because if it's ultra processed, like the chicken gravy, it's got a lot of chemicals in it. It's been like that one documentary. It has been ground down and liquefied and powdered. And then all these chemicals, you know, to color it, flavor it, preserve it. And so once you're eating all this fresh, whole scratch food, homemade food, and then you have that, you can taste all the chemicals, all the weirdness. Don't you think, Sam? I was talking, I was talking about my powdered chicken gravy. I made it the other day, yesterday, because I wanted potatoes and gravy and it was hideous. Okay, well, can you turn off the Yes, yes, I can. Good morning. We're still drinking our first cup of coffee. And we're gonna go to the health food store. I'm completely out of white flour. So I have a ton. I have 50, probably 75 pounds of whole wheat. This is cornstarch. And I have put a little cacao in it because it's no sugar. And I use this as dry shampoo. But I also use it on my eyes. I use a lot of oils on my face, coconut and shea butter. And so I put this on my eyes to keep the mascara from running. Although I can't see, I can't see this, see very well without my glasses. Although, <clears throat> I bought some mascara from Dollar Tree and I'm telling you, it's like the best mascara. It's so basic and simple. It doesn't even have much of a brush. And so the mascara goes on really thick. Dollar 25. I bought some expensive, like $20 mascara. And it was supposed to be like extending, thickening, waterproof. I was like, yeehaw. It actually dried up right away. I better do this in here. It actually dried up right away. I bought two as a, you know, I stocked up because, you know, it lasts me at least a year or more. It didn't, it worked okay. It wasn't that thick or lush. Um, it did stay on. And then the second bottle dried up. I never even opened it and it dried up. And I know one of you said use a little saline, I think and put it in there and it'll wet it up and, and make it all nice again. And it's also safer. Um, but I went out and just got some stuff from the dollar store and I'm super happy with it. Although I have to admit, I gotta check and see if it's am animal tested. It's LA something i don't think they should test they should test makeup on people you know don't do it on animals that's no good no bueno anyway this is um i do love this stuff this is kind of pricey but it is a primer oh 
Okay. <sighs> so I gotta go to the health food store and get some flour. I have a little cash. I got a little hold of a little bit of cash. See this stuff. And see, it's kind of weird. It doesn't really have much of a brush. And it is thick. So I got a hold of a little bit of cash and I'm going to go out and get some flour. 25 pounds of flour. Because we're going through it like crazy. I got to start making more wheat. I've been doing a lot of sourdough, tortillas, and pizza dough. And I've just been doing white. Because sometimes wheat is kind of... I don't know. It's not that exciting. Sometimes wheat is a little bit too, makes things too hard and crunchy and bitter. And I need to make pierogies today. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that and I'm going to get chips or I'm going to get a huge bag of corn tortillas and make chips. And I have all that salsa. Okay. I have salsa. Okay, I have this. This is like a, where am I glad? Oh, Let's see, I'm doing that stuff my mom used to do. Where are my glasses? And then they're on your head or they're hanging on your shirt. I need one of those strings. There we go, just real light, because this is like, it's it's permanent. And then, I washed my hair today. I don't wash my hair every day, and it doesn't need it. I wash my hair maybe every four or five days, and it just doesn't need it. And I think it's a lot better. I just don't have problems with a dry scalp or dandruff or anything anymore. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to go out. I've got some things at the library, so let's go to the library and let's go to the health food store. And I need some more sugar. I've got, now I've started feeding the hummingbirds, so now, and they're hungry. And they're drinking it up. So now that I've started that, i got to follow through. So I got sugar, flour, and... I think I'm going to get to corn tortillas because that's a lot healthier. And then I can make tons and tons of homemade chips. I like that. I'm just, every time I go out shopping, I do not bring home junk. I just try to bring home the clean. Things are processed. Flowers processed, seasonings processed, but those are minimally processed. It's the, you know, really processed or ultra processed you want to stay away from. And it is requiring me to cook a lot. But if you have wonderful health and you have a nice fat wallet, then it's not much of a price to pay, right? So let's go. See, we have one a leftover pizza. That's just mushrooms and onions. We have the sourdough starter. What's in there? Oh, that's Molly's dog food in there, and this is her leftover dog food. What is in here? Okay. Oh, mashed potatoes. Okay. I'm going to make progies with those. And we have the cheese sauce, and we have the salsa, and sour cream. Molly, stop. And I've got some beans here that I need to heat up, but I'll heat them up when I get home. I know what Molly wants. I know what she, but she has to wait. Mom, bring Till I smack my noggin From diving in the shallow end I eat too many hot dogs Now I got a cramp Old man in my belly and Well, we're at the library And it's not open yet Let me check the time And this is what I need
Look at her. She thinks she's a sled dog. She's trying to catch up with Sam, who's way ahead. But it ain't gonna happen, Molly. It ain't gonna happen. No, but I'm not gonna walk fast. Good morning. Uh, I'm still purging. I got rid of one piece of furniture and I'm filling a box right there. And uh, I'm just going through stuff. And there's a lot of stuff that someone else will really enjoy that I actually don't like my books. I love my books. I'm going to keep a lot of them, but there's some that I got for free. And I will never read. So why not pass them on to someone who will enjoy them? And also, I can take a bag um, down the way. There are some little street book libraries, and I have borrowed books from there. So maybe I'll go fill those up. 
that would be nice. And I'm also gonna go through my pantry today and I'm gonna get rid of a lot of those little Mylar bar bags of rice and beans and oats because we cannot use them all up in time. And so I'm gonna take those to the food bank. So I think today is gonna be a day of filling up and giving, 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 giving. Good morning. Well, I watched a bunch of videos yesterday. Watched a bunch of videos yesterday. And one of them was this, I don't know, I just got a hold of all these interesting, interesting videos. And one of them was one of those challenges you know, where people try to eat for a month on, uh, well, you know, like try to we eat for a week, feed a family for a week on $20, that kind of thing. And she was just making food for herself and she was trying to see if she could stretch $100 for a month. And she's been doing it in a series, like not just all at once. So she had two videos. So she's made it about a week or so. Um, but she's already spent half her money, so she's not quite sure she can do it. I'm I'm pretty impressed. I'm like a hundred dollars, you know. But I have four people to feed, and the answer is no. I mean, I could use the food bank if I rotated them. I could use the food bank once a week, and then I do have stores of flour and rice and beans but oh god I don't know I love watching those challenges because it gives me ideas and oh more coffee yay okay I don't know where my coffee cup is I was gonna brew some more coffee and we were gonna chat but then I remembered she made this wonderful breakfast. She kept frying potatoes and frying eggs, and it just looked delicious. And we have not really been doing any traditional breakfast. We just have toast and maybe a fried egg here and there. I don't know what we do for breakfast. We're more like into the main meal of the day. You know, breakfast is just kind of like, if you get hungry, you eat something, but we're not into it. Except for school. When there's school, yes. I try to make sure the kids eat a hearty meal before they go or something. But anyway, I'm gonna try this. And she talked about dicing. I'm going to throw in some onions, too. Okay, let's go. It is ready to go. Might be too many potatoes. What happened with these guys? Okay, we'll do this, we'll throw some onions, and then those are gonna have to fry for a long time, which will give me time to clean up my kitchen, which I went to bed with it clean and everybody stayed up and they did pretty good. They did pretty good this time. I appreciate it, my family's trying. Everybody's trying to do chores and pitch in, because old mommy's getting tired. Well, old mommy, I love my housework and I love cooking, but you know, when you're constantly cooking and no one says anything except for to complain, you lose your inspiration. And I had to have a little talk with everyone about that. Like, Oops, this is, uh-oh. This is actually my fruit and vegetable cutting board, but not 
I have a special cutting board that's kind of ugly, and it's for meat, garlic, and onions. But as you can see, I'll just have to scrub it really well. You don't want to mix your cutting boards because there's nothing like cutting up melon on a cutting board that has had lots of onions and garlic. Then you get garlic, onion, melon, and it's nasty. Okay, so we'll wash this. I could be a dream. Oh, there's my old, yeah, I didn't, I made pierogies. I don't know if that'll be in this video or the video before. Okay, I just want to mix in those onions. There might be too many onions in here. That's the thing, a lot of people just cook a little bit of stuff, but I've got two big eaters, well three, dad and the kids, they're eaters, and, they're, and the kids are growing like crazy. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna let that fry. And I've got to do a couple things. I've got uh, first off, I gotta clean. This one's not that dirty, it just had flour on it. I was using it for my pierogies. And this. And we go through so many dishes, it makes me crazy. I would love that. And oh, I think that I need to have like some kind of routine. I need some kind of little routine. Okay, we did soak 
flour is so hard to work with. I made progies and I still have some leftovers, so I can make progies today if I'm feeling so inclined. Yesterday was a wonderful day. It was too cold to swim. It's mid-June and it was much too cold to swim, believe it or not. It was only in the 70s and I don't swim in the pool when it's in the 70s. I'm a real princess when it comes to the pool. It has to be a hot day. And since we trimmed the tree, the walnut tree, we had huge branches that were just shading the pool all day. Since we trimmed those, the pool has been really warm. And Bali um, changed the sand and cleaned up the filters, and so they're running well. And they have I don't know why I have so many dish rags right now. I think I lost one, so I started another. That one's clean. Let's just kind of use this one up. So, see, there's just glasses, 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 glasses. But it does make me kind of crazy and my kids make fun of me because I'm like one cup one cup but really how many dang cups do we need That's my creamer There we go. Now it's looking. Oh, let's see. I like, I saved the air popper for the kids, but I love to do my popcorn in a pan with olive oil. Okay, this big pan is Molly's food. And. What's happening here? See, you've got to clean, you've got to clean the kitchen with me. Oh, look at that. All right. So I did buy a couple of these containers. I usually have, I have a lot that I saved I also save all these. I save, if I if there's a good container, it's nice and solid, I save it. And I save, we have a lot of to-go thermoses and lunches because I pack the kids' lunches for school and their water and I pack Bali's lunches. I don't know if that fits. Anyway. So I have these. Okay, so I'm gonna use these. I have a lot of these. I have, like once a year, I get hot and sour soup from the Asian restaurant and they have the best containers and I save all of them and they last for a good year. And then I have these and I have a bunch of yogurt containers. Okay, so I have a bunch of to-go containers in there, but no, wait a minute. Use this, and I like to use the little ones because, is this really, does that fit on there? Kind of, okay. I really like the clear containers. I think this comes off. Anyway, I like the clear because then I can see what I have. But I know that this is all. <sighs> I gotta do some 
I gotta do some deep cleaning pretty soon. My floors need to be swept and vacuumed and mopped. Anyway, this is the food that I made Molly. And it's got beef that I got for free and rice, regular white rice and cauliflower rice and um, some frozen vegetables and vegetables from the garden. Oh, also, we're already, it's mid-June, and I'm telling you, every time I go to the garden, like sometimes the weather's been cool, so we haven't watered in a couple days, and you go out there and the corn grows like crazy, and we're already getting zucchini, and the tomatoes are already there and getting big. It's crazy. So it makes me very happy because it tells me that the soil and the conditions are very rich. The soil is rich. We are watering enough and feeding them well enough. Okay, so two of these I will keep out. And then I'll freeze some of this. Two I'll keep out because she's going through it like crazy. That's probably, it's probably about three, four days worth there. And then I'll pack this. Yep, I'm gonna need this other one. So I am glad I bought these really cheap. They are not the best. They are not like, oh, they're gonna last forever. But, and I don't like to, you know, I try to get away from plastic, but I will tell you, I do not like to store things in plastic because I had some plastic Tupperware, I mean glass. I do not like to store things in glass because I had some glass. Hold on, I gotta check the potatoes. Hey, they are flying up storm. Um, I do not like to store things in glass and I'll tell you why, because they break like crazy. And then you have broken glass in your freezer. In the fridge, I don't care. I'll pack them in glass jars, but so freezer, no, no, no. Either the plastic, but you can also, there are a lot of, I have compostable plastic bags. I don't think they're plastic. So there we go. We got lots of food for Miss Molly, which is wonderful. Because we are trying to save. Okay, I have a lot of these. And I had ordered these, but the problem is they don't give me... They don't... These are wonderful. But I have to find another way to get them. Because they don't allow you to order just the bags you want. Like, I only want the garbage bags and these big bags. I don't use the sandwich bags, but they gave me a million sandwich bags. Only a little bit of this. And then it's on a, um, I think every six months order, but then I just wind up with tons of sandwich bags. So I'm going to continue to find these and use these and you can freeze um, everything in these. And then that gets rid of the whole glass problem, the plastic problem. But in the meantime, I have these wonderful things. Let's wash our last pot. Doo, 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 doo. I got these scrub daddies and scrub mommy. They have Scrub Daddy. I'm not quite sure what Scrub Daddy is. I just bought Scrub Mommy. There, my kitchen's clean. Oh, I want to do some purging today. I do. I got, I've been going through my books. There I saw that. I just feel like it has to be done. I keep coming across videos about it. Like, it just makes life, when you don't have all these things, it makes life easier. And then you have time. Like, I've been spending so much time in the forest. All the time with Molly. Molly and I go in the forest. Molly and I love our walk. We love to go to the forest. Sometimes a child will join us. Sometimes... Not always. Okay. There's too many things going here. There we go. So yeah, I'm into doing the forest and filming. And 
and um, I don't know, I am writing. I write every day. But I don't want to spend my time. You know, it's such beautiful weather. I don't want to spend my time in the house. Look at it. It's all nice and clean now. That's how I like it. But I don't want to spend my time in the house cooking and cleaning all day. In the pool. Oh, goodness. Now, today is 77. So, once again, I will not be doing the pool. Look at, we got so much homemade stuff here. We got salsa. That was delicious. Um, this is my sourdough starter. And then I have a whole, oh, this is my cheese sauce. Homemade dog food. I had homemade barbecue, but we're out of that. We used all that up. And then we have our corn tortillas that we're making all our chips from. And what's this down here? Oh, beans. All right, we got beans. Mm. How are my little potatoes doing? How are my potatoes doing? Oh, oh my. She was right. You chop them up like that. These are home fries. And you chop them up like that, and they really do fry well. Nope, they're still not cooked. Mmm, they're tasty though. Maybe a little too much salt? Oh boy. Potatoes are supposed to absorb salt. Good morning. Again. All right, we just fried up a bunch of potatoes and eggs for the fam. I'm gonna wait till I work out. But I am giving a good water to the garden and there are a bunch of patches that I need to pull the weeds and plant some stuff. But I also have some rogue, a lot of, you know, we compost a lot of seeds by accident and, um, and also we let things go to seed. So I have a lot of wild mustard greens growing, which the bugs devoured a lot of it, but I think I'm gonna pick some of it. And we have a couple grapes that are actually producing now. Then I just have these patches where I need to weed it and stick some stuff in there. And I think there's a few grapevines we are going to get rid of we got them from Grocery Outlet years ago and they've never produced. It's already on four years. So I don't suggest, I personally do not like to buy anything from grocery stores or hardware stores or Home Depot or Lowe's. I've had the worst experiences. I go to trusted nurseries with good reputations and that's where, and I spend the extra money, to make sure that I get trees and bushes and vines that will actually produce but i cannot tell you how quickly it's june it's i think we're june 17th and this garden is just every time i turn around it has grown here like these these were all just little scraggly bush you know scraggly little plants and now look at them they're huge anyway and then the bell peppers are already producing like crazy and the corn's already pretty high and the tomatoes are forming that we already have big tomatoes mm. everything we already have zucchini see i don't know if you can see there's already tomatoes and they're already getting big and then this tomato plant, I gotta do something with it. This is not working. It's falling over in its cage. So I'm gonna have to fix the cage. I cannot do it right now while I'm... And anyway, and we have forest and forest of sunflowers, but sunflowers are good. They bring in the pollinators. 
They feed the birds, and I like having the birds in here because they eat the bugs. A lot of people do not want birds in their garden. I do. I am very pro bird in my garden. I have, oopsie. Okay, we gotta fix that. What is happening here? Oh, wow, look at all those tomatoes. Okay, I gotta turn this on. Look at that cute little girl. Oh, look at a napkin. And look at that. What happened? Yep, I stored it away. Okay, so I added some things. I had this little lamp my friend left behind. And so anyway, I may do something different with this area, but I feel relief. And the piano was looking really bland and I got that all fixed up. So part of it is just kind of redecorating a little bit, like making things a little more charming. But um, I'm definitely, right now I'm gonna go through my books and I have some books I just love, I won't get rid of. But there's books I have been given for free or I found for free um, and I'm not reading them. I haven't for a year or two or whenever it was that I hauled them home. So let's give them away. Okay, I am going to just chat for a little bit. I'm trying to do, I know you guys like the chatting. Don't worry, I'm going to do, you know, because that's what I do, I chat. So I do like to sit and talk and process. I was going to have some more coffee with you, but... <sighs> Bolly drank the rest of my coffee, which gives me excuse to make a fresh pot. So this is what's happening. Come here, Malls. Look at that. She just opened the door herself. Yeah, she did. She's crazy. She's so crazy. She. We had the longest walk yesterday. Yes, we did. A W-A-L-K. Look at those little ears. Are all, and then she had a lovely bath. And she's been eating homemade food. And she's just getting, like, her life is amazing. She came from the ghetto, really not a terrible situation, but not really optimal. And now she's just like living the life. <clears throat> and she's got me wrapped around her little paw and I often feel like her little servant, her human servant. But she's so devoted and so sweet and stays so by my side, especially I got really sick, what a week, a couple weeks ago. And she laid by my side for two, three days. And um, so cute. And I even had dreams about her. I dreamt I was carrying her in a basket like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. And we were kind of in this abandoned town and she would jump out of the basket and do go take off, but then she'd come back. And that's kind of how we are. Like Molly and I are pretty, what's she doing? She's getting her bed ready. Oh. She's so funny. I mean, she and I are inseparable. No, 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 no. That's my hat, little girl. No. You find something else to chew on. Um, hold on. I got to get her a toy. Okay, we got toys. We got toys. We got penguins. Up we go. We got birds. We've got, a, I don't know, a loving porcupine. We've got another critter. I have found, I have boxes of little stuffed animals because I got them at Goodwill for 50 cents each. So I brought home, and sometimes I find, and, and then I think I found a box of them for free. Anyway, I found all these stuffed animals and Raya loves the stuffed animals and so does Molly. So sometimes Mariah takes all her little stuffies and I have to bring them back. I'm like, those do belong to your doggy sister. Anyway, so what is happening? Um, we are at the end of June and it's actually, today is 77 degrees and I'm kind of bummed because I don't swim. I'm a super princess when it comes to weather. Like I said earlier, it has to be high 80s, 90s for me to swim. I do not like cold water. And since 
they trimmed up the tree, the pool's getting direct sunlight and it is warm. And then we have a, a little solar filter. So it heats up the water and brings it back in. So the pool's been delightful and we spend all day swimming off and on. It is a wonderful thing and we exercise and we do laps and we play and I mean, it's just not swimming. It is like, it's like we become seals and we just leap through inner tubes and and act crazy. It's wonderful. I am not reading as much as I would like to. So what's happening is, what's happening? What's happening? Um, I really feel, I, I'm not, I don't want to say it too loud because I don't want, the kids actually were okay with the TV. Bali got it and he was on board. We, I did not get rid of the TV. Like I did not donate it. It was a cheap Walmart smart TV that we got for, I think you get them super cheap now, but we got it for, <clears throat> um, I think it was like $229. So that's a really good deal and it works great. So, and it's a smart TV and it has Roku and everything on it. So yeah, I just couldn't, I didn't want to totally give it away. But I wanted it off my wall and out of my living room. And I noticed a few things inspired me. I went to my friend's house, who's an artist. You saw, if you saw that one video, you saw her art. And she lives up in the mountains in this beautiful area. And she's an incredible artist. And she spends her time, she's heavily involved in the theater. And she gets me all these gigs to do the door or the ushering. So I've been enjoying these wonderful, I, I enjoyed many, many nights of this one immersive theater musical. It was about the gold rush and the story about this saloon and all the people in this town. And it's called immersive theater. So people are kind of sitting there and, and they, they feel sort of like they're on stage um, being a part of and then recently I showed you the little clips of the outdoor. There was an outdoor theater and it was very avant-garde and it was a musical. Well, it was done with dance and music, but no talking. And it told a story. And so that, she is an amazing influence in my life because now I'm getting to experience all this theater for free and I'm meeting all these young creative artists and musicians and it's very fun and that is her life she's heavily involved in the theater she has leading roles she's a great singer she's amazing with makeup she does body art she does these incredible paintings one thing she doesn't do is watch tv she does not lay around watching tv she has a tiny tv in her house and there are paintings over it i think she has a painting over it so it's not the focus at all. And that reminded me of so many things. Like when I was growing up, when I was growing up, we lived up in the mountains and I was not allowed to watch TV except for, I think Friday nights and Saturday mornings. Friday nights, my mom and I would sit and watch a few shows. I've talked about those, Dallas, Falcon Crest, Fantasy Island. <laughs> the plane, the plane. Oh my goodness. We would watch those. Falcon Crest. I just remember that good looking guy. What was he driving a Ferrari or whatever? Oh my goodness. And Dallas. Big, huge Dallas fans. JR. JR Ewing. Was that his name? See, I even remember it because that was my childhood. But that was like on Friday nights, there was a lineup. And so we could watch TV those nights. That was our break. And then Saturday morning, I was allowed to watch cartoons. But the cartoon selection was horrible. It was like Scooby-Doo. Of course, I loved it because I didn't have any choices. And so it was like the Looney Tunes, you know, Bugs Bunny and um, Scooby-Doo. I didn't, I don't think we got PBS up there. We lived way up in the mountains and we had a huge metal antenna on top of the roof. And my mother would have to get up there 
and adjust it and I would be by the TV and I'd holler out the window, okay, it's clear now, which meant the one of two or three channels we got was clear. And that's all we got, like one or two channels basically. And so what did I do with my time? <clears throat> well, I, I did a ton of art. I was very, and I was actually getting pretty good. I am not good anymore. I pretty much am starting my art up at about the age I stopped, which was about 10 or 11. But I was really into sketching and art and reading. I read like crazy. I read, I had every single Little House on the Prairie series and I read them over and over. And then I would go outside and build, you know, I would be a pioneer and I'd rake up acorns to claim land or I would build, you know, teepees or um, forts or, and I had all my toys and I had my dollhouse that I would decorate and I would collect little pieces of antique furniture when we would go out and about because <clears throat> sometimes the stores back then we lived in a tiny town and any of the towns around us were also little touristy towns and they would have these stores where they would sell a little bit of antique um dollhouse sets you know little tall house furniture and tea sets and all and i would collect as i you know every time i had a little money or whatever i would collect something for my dollhouse and I would dress my dolls up and I would have tea parties and I would dress my cats and I had cats. And I loved my cats, but my poor cats did get dressed up sometimes and they were my children. But don't worry, I was very, very loving to my cats, despite them having to wear prairie dresses sometimes. And so, and I would write books. I would write and illustrate and I'd cut out all the paper and you know, do the cover and then I'd write and illustrate and then I'd staple it together. And I remember when my mother passed, I went through her boxes and I didn't keep it. I don't know why I didn't keep it. I don't know. I was in a weird space back then and I was just wanting to get purge of my childhood and the past memories because they were not that good. I mean, some parts are good and I do remember them now and reflect on them and enjoy them. But um, after her passing, I just wanted to cleanse. And, um, but now I kind of wish, you know, I, I do love decluttering and making life simple and opening up space in a home. But at the same time, you have to be careful. That's why with the TV, I was like, I have to, I felt like if I didn't get it off the wall and out of the living room, I was just going to lose my mind. Because I feel like the TV is going 24 7. Someone is always watching the TV. Hold on. I want to not talk too loud because I don't, because everybody was actually really good about it, but I don't want any drama. I don't want drama because I've got a tween and then I have another child that's emotional. So sometimes, you know, when I want to make decisions, I have to, we have to make it as a family. And then sometimes there's a hold up and it's like, no, 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 from everybody else. And so then I have to prove my case. Like this would be really beneficial. Anyway, we have the TV in here. Okay, we have my TV in here, but this is not a smart TV. This is not a smart TV. It's an old TV that was given to me by my friend Star. And you can watch movies but that's it. No YouTube, no news, no junk, nothing. So what I was feeling like is I was feeling like the TV was on all the time. And I ask that we not turn the TV on until five o'clock. But every day it required me policing, nagging. And then I have my Pandora and I had some good stations on there but then the kids kept putting on all their stations and they weren't like fun station. They were like parody songs and, and they're funny at first, you know, like we had a weird Al, Al Yankovic station and then there was a Rucka Rucka. I don't know if you guys know Rucka Rucka and he's very political and, and the songs are done with humor and they're kind of calling out the system and what's going on and, and, I love that my kids are like super aware 
of the environment and politics and justice and people's rights. But, you know, like one song will do ya. Like you hear one or two songs and go, oh, yeah, that, that guy's funny. Yeah, okay, he's calling out the system. But all day, I'm just like, I can't hear Rekka Rekka and, and Al Yankovic all day. And so it was just, I just couldn't take it. And I also have been watching, you know, so I remember growing up, like I was always active. I was always outside. I was running around. I was tan and skinny and healthy. And I was hanging out with the chickens and trying to ride the donkeys, but the donkeys, they don't, they do what they want to do. So usually I just sit on them and they would graze and we'd hang out and um, just constantly doing things busy. You know, yeah, sometimes I got bored. Sometimes I got lonely, but I was an only child living out in the forest. Um, but I was productive and I was busy and I was creating. And I remember I used to have Joni Gregan's workout. The Met, it came in a book form and you put the record on. Uh, that's how old I am. This was the 70s. And you put the record on and you would turn the pages, you know, and, and follow the aerobics routine. I'd spread out a blanket and do my aerobics to the record, to my book. So very busy. And, um, you know, and then other things happened and kind of took that away. But then as, you know, as a young adult, I didn't have, I rarely had cable or internet. I did not get my first computer till I was, I think, 30 maybe when I was 30 I bought my first computer and it was a Mac it was those bubble Macs you remember that real big and heavy and they go on your desktop and they had a bubble back and you could get them in all kinds of colors and designs so I had my first computer and I think my first cell phone sometime in my 30s like 30 31 that's how long it took me to catch up so long. I was the last person on earth to use a Walkman with cassettes. I was like the last person to have a cell phone. I had real anxiety. I had a former boyfriend who just was like, you've got to learn how to use this and catch up to modern society. I was like, again. But I was very opposed to all these things. Now today, I love a lot of things. I love YouTube for all the good stuff. And I just try to stay away from the other stuff. Um, and my cell phone. I love my cell phone. I make videos for my cell phone. I watch YouTube and learn things from my cell phone. I get to talk to people. I mean, you know, and I have, you know, a Mac and I have a PC and I write and I edit and I film. So I'm very, you know, I'm still not caught up with all the techies out there. I'm still not, you know, I see people making videos. They're way, they're still way ahead. I probably will just, I don't know if I'll ever figure it out or catch up or, I don't know. But the thing is, I see its value and that it's wonderful um, and it connects the world. And this is why in other countries, things are improving vastly because they're able to connect. People can educate themselves online. They don't have to depend on paying for a school um, they can find out what's going on around the world. They can get ideas like, hey, we seem to be behind times in our little village. Why don't we do a couple things to improve the quality of our life? There's all kinds of wonderful things. But it does have to be monitored. Not monitored, but like we really have to be careful that we don't get sucked in. And then that's like where we live. And I was feeling like the TV and the gaming and the phone is where we live. And I'm just taking it one place at a time, one step at a time. So when I wrote this book, when I wrote this beloved book, I love this book. A lot of you love this book. This was, took over a year of um, just writing about life at home, being a homemaker, working with a very small budget. I've always worked, even when I'm working, there's still, we have a small budget. 
I'm not making a fortune on YouTube. I'm not making a fortune with my books. So we are always on a small budget, but we live very well and we thrive and I get more and more clever every year on how to make things stretch, how to make things work, how to, you know, get the good things in life like cruises. I figured out that this year, I'm like, huh, tax returns could pay for a cruise. And so that's a dialed in. But this was all about, we were unplugged. I wrote this, like I was cranking out all these homemaking books. And then I stopped. I read What Falls from the Sky by Esther Emery and Carla Emery's daughter. If those of you who know homesteading, what she wrote, that big homesteading Bible, I have it somewhere here. Everybody should have one of those, I'm telling you, if you're gonna homestead at all. Um, and she wrote about her year offline, but now she was offline, no phones, nothing. She didn't even use a credit card, she used cash. She used paper maps to get around. Um, no phone, unless it was a phone, you know, connected to the wall, I think. I don't know. Anyway, no, she could get on and write. Oh, I need another cup of coffee. She could get on the computer and write, but she couldn't be connected, like have a blog or anything. And she said, and the book is okay. You know, it's, it may, it's a nice book to read and it makes you think. Um, but the biggest thing from her, actually I saw it from her channel, is she said the year she went offline is the year she found her soul. And she reconnected to God. Okay. She changed, I mean, she connected to her homemaking. She hated homemaking. But she learned to love her homemaking. And she connected with her family. She healed her marriage. Well, she had a child and she was pregnant at the time. And her life was out of control. But she came home, she decided to stay home, get offline, she healed her marriage, she got into her parenting, she got into her homemaking. Um, um, she reconnects, she connected with a spiritual uh, way of life. She connected with God and um, you know, she just kind of transformed. And it went from her fast paced life, I think before she was a manager, a theater manager, and her life was going a thousand miles an hour and or a minute. And she was on all kinds of social, like she lived on social media. And she was very introverted, but she was very extroverted on social media. That's where she lived. And so when she quit, she went from that to being at home, learning how to bake, learning how to be okay with being a homemaker. She had a real aversion because she, I think she had some issues with her mom and she saw her mom struggle and kind of go through some hard times and die in poverty. And so she had this huge aversion to any kind of like homesteading or homemaking or anything. But she learned to make peace with it and start to remember some of the things her mother taught her and start to do it and enjoy it. And her life transformed. It healed and it transformed. And she went, she became so like Zen that she wasn't Zen. She was, I think, more Christian, but like that whole like focused that she even became like so involved with this tree down the street, like watching it in the winter and then watching it blossom again and change through all the seasons. And and then eventually <clears throat> afterwards, her and her husband and her kids decided to homestead and they had a yurt up in the hills and she started a channel and she had like two channels. It was the Fouch family homestead and they're still up. Fouch, F-O-U-C-H-E, I think, Fouch Family Homestead, and then her channel, which I, I think it is Esther Emery, and then her kids started having channels, and they were doing all this homesteading and living up in the mountains, 
and they started doing the thing with the Facebook and the Twitter and the Instagram and everybody had a channel. And then one day they disappeared. They did this for about four years. And then one day her last video up and it's still all there. You can find all the channels and see them. But her last video was, it was something about dog days or something, summer days. And so they were dealing with yellow jackets up at their place and they were talking about summer and they were just enjoying their summer. And I think they were going into town or something. It was just a very sweet summer video. And then they disappeared and you cannot find them. Their Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, everything's closed or shut down. And their videos are up, but the comments are off now. And, um, you know, and everyone's like, oh, I hope they're okay. I don't know why people always panic when people disappear from YouTube. People panic. And I'm going to tell you right now, people, it happens. And I know it's not great. And I know you guys are mad at me for doing it. But sometimes that's what creators do. They just are like done one day and it's just easier to like walk away because sometimes when you talk about it, people will beg you and talk you into staying. And um, she just wanted to be done. So I did find an interview and she said basically that they were getting once again too involved in the whole media and being on camera and filming themselves and so um, they, she just wanted to cut it off because they had this beautiful life and it was peaceful and slow. And then they started getting caught up in it. And the thing is her, her and her husband were like hugely involved in theater. So their thing kind of is entertaining theater. I love how my children just burst into my room. Speaking of theatrics, they always just burst into my room and ask me weird things and then they disappear <laughs> anyway so her and her husband were big involved in the theater she was a theater manager I think or um, manager of the theater or manager of play who knows and he was a set designer and they had big jobs and they were making decent money so that is kind of their natural thing you know so they were getting too into it and the kids were having the channels and everything, which I will not let my kids, when they get older, if they want to channel, that's fine. But they have to be older and have their, kind of understand their emotions. Because as we know, it can be brutal on here. It can, there's so much good, but then there's little brutal parts to being on here. Anyway. They have disappeared. They are fine. They just realized, whoa, we're getting really caught up in it again. And they just wanted their peaceful, quiet, lovely life back. And they're gone, but you can still see their videos. Anyway, so I read Essentialism by Greg McCowan. And I read Esther Emery's What Falls from the Sky, her year off YouTube. And from Greg, I learned, like, figure out what's the most important and get rid of all the rest. Minimalism, keep what you love, get rid of the rest. That's not serving you, not, you know, not feeling like, you know, when you look at it and go, I got rid of two paintings the other day. I put them on the street. Nice, nice painting. And then there was this one back here that had the all live, love, eat, you know. And I just was like, so this isn't my thing. And the other painting annoyed me. And I've had beautiful things that I just was like, I don't like it. I can't stand it. Or it has a bad memory or a bad energy to it that I have given away. And someone out there is thrilled. You know, there are people out there sprinkled about the neighborhood that are thrilled with these various pieces. So <clears throat> I learned, you know, get rid of it. And then with what falls from the sky, like reduce this constant consumption of, you know, plugging in to the internet and the world and the TV. And I have felt over the last, I'd say, I don't know, six months or more, I have felt 
like that feeling of overwhelming. Like I feel, I felt, I felt it like too much information. Well, okay, let me back up a minute. So I read those books and I actually unplugged as I got rid of the internet. We did have internet access. Um, so where was I? Stream of consciousness is drifting away. Trains leaving the station. That's what my friend used to say. Trains leaving the station. I can tell. Um, okay. So I read, so we unplugged. Now we still sort of had access. Like I had a phone and my kids and I could get on the phone. I got to where I didn't hardly get on the phone, but my kids would play with my phone. And, um, we would go to the library once a week and sometimes we would order a hotspot, which is a little modem you plug into the wall and it gives you internet access. But it's perfect because it takes months to get it because it became so popular that it took months to get it. And then you could only keep it two weeks. But it was very fun because we would get, this is what I'd like to go back to because then it's like we weren't completely cut off. And we were like, really, like at first we all went through detox. I went through detox and my kids were like a little bit savage about it. And then we were confused and lost and, and wandering around. And then it shifted and then we were busy. And then we were playing and hanging out outside and swimming and going for walks and going to the library and talking and playing and drawing and reading and creating and it was wonderful we all flourished we all flourished i wrote i took a year i was cranking out books like this and that and i loved writing those books but this one i really like i have my computer at the kitchen table because i was always cooking still am to this day why are you slamming the door like that um, but I went through some real healing work, you know, a lot of like reflecting and inner work and crying and like real good stuff, which I wouldn't have done because I was too busy. I was always working, 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 had a million things going. And then the TV and the internet and the YouTube and, and just constantly. So I had to go through a major detox and then... I, and then we all flourished and I did a lot of healing work and I took my time. I wrote this during that time and I really like got really deep into observing things and my homemaking and life, you know, how to flourish with very little money and, and how to really fall in love with your homemaking and, and to slow down and unplug and a lot of positives came from this. I got rid of all my hustles except for the YouTube and the writing books and I got rid of the main internet in our house so we just had to like order and borrow it once in a while and it was wonderful but now here we are back to you know we got internet in the house again because uh, Mariah has to do her schoolwork and most of it's online. Sam is still in his grades in his school. They're in the same school, but in his grades, he does paper. They still do books. We work from books and paper and pencils. Um, Mariah's, most of her stuff's online. Although I think the math is gonna now be a book because they've decided online's not a great idea for the kids. Um, but so we got the internet and I would not have gotten it back. I wouldn't have, but I got it because we had to, I have to communicate with the teachers. Mariah has to be online all the time. You know, it's, it, it's, I can do it on my phone. Yes, but it's not as easy. It's not as easy. Anyway, so we did that. And I have noticed, you know, um, I've noticed what's happening and I have felt lately like I don't read as much as I would like to or want to because I get distracted with TV or YouTube. And I have noticed that the TV is always on, even though I made a rule, it's always on. 
and it's loud and I feel like I'm always yelling. I'm always in here hiding and yelling, turn it down, turn it down. Making me crazy, sound like an old crazy person. And and then and then when I do put on the music, they change it to their crazy music. And I'm like, I cannot hear Ali Yankovic sing about an Am Amish. What's that one song he sings, the Amish? The, they don't even sing like, just eat it. It's that Amish song. I don't know. Anyway, so I felt like I was going to lose my mind if I didn't remove it. And I feel like there's a real information overload. And that is a real thing. It's like there's a couple things as I've been researching online, just kind of looking into it and researching it and like, am I just being dramatic or would this be a beneficial thing to just remove this? And there is, when we watch internet and when we watch YouTube or gaming or TV or whatever, there's a constant, um, and social media and all that, there's a constant dopamine hit that's happening. So our dopamine is what makes us feel happy. And it's just constantly going off, going off. Going. Even as creators, if we receive tons of compliments and thumbs up and views, we get high off of it. And so then, you know, the next video doesn't do as well. And we're like, wah, wah. And then, you know, and then we have a video that just shoots out. You know, I, I have not experienced this, but I see some YouTubers, man, they have a video that just hits and they have like quarter million views. And you can see them getting kind of excited and sparkly eyed about it, but it doesn't last. But we get addicted to all these. So the way they've constructed, um, what is it called? On Netflix, there's a documentary called Social Dilemma. And I think it's all about this. And so all the things they do, the streaming and put this video, you know, you're watching a video and you've got this stream of you might like this one next. And, and I do kind of like that they help me find and choose videos. I do actually like that. It's like having a personal assistant helping you figure out your wardrobe. But... There's just this constant, like we, and I do it too. I'll watch a video and it's an okay video, but I'm like, oh, what, what's this video over here? Well, I like the picture. Let me click on this and see. Oh, the title sounds better. I want to click on that. And then I'll watch like five partial videos. Never focused on one. Although I have lately, I, I have been trying to focus. Like, let's just stay with this one. Let's just open up the picture. So that's all you see, because obviously you can't. You're like those horses. You need blinders. But <clears throat> with all of it, not only are we getting dopamine hits, which after a while we need things bigger and more obnoxious and more exciting and more to have that same hit because our dopamine starts to kind of wear out and dwindle and get weaker. And so now we need bigger things and bigger things and more and brighter. And that's why movies it used to be a little blow up, a little gunfire now it's like AK you know 47 whatever AKs everywhere and buildings blowing up and people jumping off sky rise it you know you see some of the action films and it's like okay we've just gone so beyond not realistic but that's what people need now because they're so desensitized they need like bigger bigger blow-ups, bigger gunfire, bigger fight scenes, bigger jumping off things. It's crazy. And what's also happening is that we have so many, um, like the smart TV. Is that you out there, Sammy? Sammy! I hear him humming out there. And so you're getting all these dopamine hits and then you need more and more and more and more and more because now you're addicted to the dopamine hits and now when you're not getting those dopamine hits, you feel kind of depressed. I don't know, I just feel kind of funky today. Well, because you're not getting your fixes. And then there's the information overload because you're like watching all this on YouTube and then you're getting it on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and the news reels and the TV and you're at work in front of the screen and you've got the phone and then you go home and then you're on TV and then you're in the car listening to something and people are becoming depressed, freaked out, 
you know, listless, drained of energy in life because it's information overload, like times a million, and dopamine hits overload times a million, and there's no rest for the brain. There's no rest for the body. Your chemistry can't even balance itself out. It's like, pew, 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 pew. What's happening? What's happening? So at some point, you have to remove it. And I will tell you, I was like, I have to get rid of the TV. And I really felt it in my soul. Like, I have to start getting rid of things again because it's too much. Like, you know, it's just too much. And mostly it's for me. Like, the young kids, they're like, it ain't too much for us. We love it. But for me, as an older lady, I'm like, oh, I'm 53. I'm going to be 54 pretty soon. And I just cannot take it. And I also feel like I'm not reading, I'm not writing as much. I am, but not nearly as much. Like I used to just really, I'd do my chores and read, you know, and go swim and write. And when I wrote this book, so fat and juicy, because I was really thinking and reading and, and exploring and I would like be in the kitchen, I'd have my laptop in the kitchen and I would be um, just, Typing and cooking. I was writing and thinking and cooking. That's all I did for a year, it feels like. And so this beautiful thing came out of it. And I'm very proud of this book. And I don't normally read my own books. <laughs> I don't. Um, but then, lately I've been kind of reading through it. I'm like, it is a sweet book. I, I'm going to give myself a little... I never really promote myself. But I am starting to, because somebody's got to believe in me. So, I'm working on another book like that. But I'm just not going, you know, I just can tell. I'm not going that deep. I'm distracted. I feel overwhelmed by the noises and the sensory, you know, stuff and the noises and the constant information and loudness and... Uh, I need peace. So I didn't get rid of everything. I have this TV up here and we can get movies from the library. We actually have a little collection of movies ourselves and we can watch, but we're all less likely to watch if it's just, you know, like I put on a movie when I'm typing or I mean writing, I don't, not typing, but I'm writing. So when I, when I'm writing, you know, sometimes I like a movie, but I just like the, like, just something in the background. But do I watch it? No. I rarely even watch anything I put on. That's why, you know, Paint Your Wagon, it's one of those movies I love. Paint Your Wagon. Let me... Actually, I have quite a few movies here right now. Oh, where's that one? Oh, my goodness. Where's the one? I better find it. Oh. Big Night. I love this one. This is such a good movie. Big Night. Such a good movie, but you have to pay attention. You do. It's kind of slow, but charming, but you have to pay attention. And what do I have? Oh, I have Godzilla. King of the Monsters. See, I've already seen this, so I'm not going to have to pay attention. I'll just have it on in the background. But this one, Paint Your Wagon. Okay, you all, those of you who have been with me for a long time know I'm like so... But when I first watched this, I put it on and then I go do my chores. So I literally saw it in parts. I never saw it all the way through. It took me like 10 times before I actually pieced it all together because I'd watch a part and then I'd go do chores and then I'd come back with some laundry, watch a little bit, fold laundry, then I'd go cook. And then as it pieced together, then I was like, you know what, this is kind of fun. I like this song. This song's really terrible. This story's charming. And then I fell in love with Elizabeth and her house. She had them build a log cabin for her. It's all she wanted was a little log cabin that could stand up in the winter and she could lock the, a door she could bolt if she needed to. And so anyway, I do love it. Um, this is a cute movie too. I like to watch this movie because it reminds me of living here. Um, but 
you know, the truth is I don't really, I don't have that attention span. I don't really want to sit and watch things. Oh, which reminds me. And even like yesterday I made pierogies and I had on the chef, Chef's Table France edition because I'm obsessed with Alan Passard because I love his story and it gives me courage to keep changing and be okay if not everybody accepts it. By coming back to this channel, there were a lot of changes. You know, I left and I thought I was going to stay gone. And I, but I am glad I came back. I am. I'm actually really, I'm actually surprised myself how I feel really happy to be back. And I feel like it's right this time. And I'm not quite sure why. But some of the reasons why a lot changed. I have a trans, Arjun is now Mariah a transgender female. Okay, that was a big change. But we love it. She's thriving. She's happy. She has blossomed more than ever when she was Arjun. And whatever anyone's thoughts are on it, just be respectful. This is our life. And um, I am okay with it. And I support it fully. And I absolutely... Um, I'm so happy at how she is thriving in this phase, in this, the way she is. But that's a big thing. And she, ha she gave me permission a while back to mention it. And I mentioned it casually. I did not want to make a big deal about it. But it's kind of hard to talk about my family without saying something. Because if I say Mariah, people are like, well, what happened to Arjun? Who's Mariah? So I had to mention it and she wanted me to and gave me permission because she felt it would help other people. And um, so that's something I was hesitant to come back and share. And I also um, felt like I had this fantasy of just being a full-time writer, just having a private life and being a full-time writer. And the funny thing is, is I hardly wrote without having a channel. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. I don't know what that was all about. Hold on one minute, I have to do something. I had to cancel Netflix. <laughs> I did, I had to cancel Apple and Netflix because we're not gonna watch them. Anyway, they're fun. They're wonderful. Okay. And I really struggle with it. I watched videos on people who gave up their TV because I had to be kind of pumped up. Like I never used to have like all my youth, most of it, you know, even a young adult living on my own. I rarely had cable only if it was just somehow still connected to the house. I'd never order cable. I didn't have internet most of the time. I mean, not even till my 30s, then I had internet. Um, but there were many times after that when I didn't have internet, I didn't have cable, I didn't have a working TV. I would just watch, t I would watch um, DVDs on my laptop. And But then I was out doing things. I was working, I was walking Clyde, I had Clyde. I would take him for long mile walks. Like seriously, sometimes eight mile walks. We would go, Clyde and I. And so, and I was very social and I had a lot going on. I wasn't sitting around watching TV, you know? And so I wanted to go back to that. So anyway, I we have stored the TV away and we've stored the VCR away. And, and now it's, we're free. And then there's this here, and we can watch movies, but we're not as likely to. And we have the radio in the kitchen, which plays all kinds of stations. And I have all kinds of CDs, because when I was unplugged, I bought a lot of movies and CDs, like all my musicals and my CDs. And um, that's how I want to work it, truly. That's how I just want to listen to music that is not connected to the internet and, or the radio, the local radio. I've got friends on the local radio, so sometimes I hear them and then I feel connected to the community and like, they're my friend. And um, 
You know, one of Sam's friend's moms is on the local, local station. They do some show. Her and her son, Sam's friend. So I want to be kind of plugged into my community. And I feel like also we get so out there, like we're taking on all the world's problems, all the world's stuff, all this information, all these people's things. And I know for me as a creator, sometimes I can't handle all these, you know, movies and shows and YouTubes. I can't because then I feel overwhelmed. I feel like there's too much out there. I feel like my stuff that I create is just getting lost in the ether with billions of other things. And I also um, sometimes get competitive and jealous and I don't like those emotions in myself. So it's better that I just really focus on my home, my family, my yard, my little street, and just in my writing and, you know, read my books. I've got this crazy, I mean, I have mammoth books. I, I've got so all these books. I've got books, books, books. I've got, I've started two of them. I'm almost done with one. I, I'm partly through one. One I haven't even started. The mammoth book I've started, but I don't know what's going to happen. But I tell you what, if I don't have the choice of the TV, guess what? I go read. I go on the porch and I sit and I read. So anyway, I feel good about it. And we'll just continue on that journey. And we still have, the kids cannot touch my phone. And I'm going to, I'm not really that interested. I watch a little bit of YouTube here and there. When I'm trying to, what I love YouTube for is when I'm trying to figure out where I want to go. Like I feel like I've just had this reset and this shift and I'm ready to go to the next level. But I'm like, what is the next level? Well, one of them was like, get rid of your TV. But then I was like, but we have Netflix and Apple and we have a Roku and we have like series to it, you know? And, and so then I just had to be like, just do it, do it. Because that was intuition. That wasn't me so much as that intuition, like that guidance, like this is what you need to do. And then I kind of fought it and then it happened and nobody really had a fit and we just stored it away. So we're not getting rid of it. We're not, you know, it's always there. And it's very comforting to know we didn't get rid of it because it's a nice TV and we did spend a pretty penny on it. So it's stored away. So we're like, okay, we're not wasting money. We're not buying things and giving them away which I've been known to do. <clears throat> and, and we always have the option of bringing it back. Maybe after a few months or a year, we're like over it and we want to, or maybe not. We just have to test that out. And it's kind of like with minimalism where they say, pack up all your stuff and store it and see what do you miss? What do you bring back out of the boxes? And then if you don't, for the next few months or year, then donate it. I'm not going to do that, but I am doing that with the TV. I'm just storing it away. And um, so that's good. So now I'm going to go brew some coffee and I'm going to purge. Now this stuff is going away. It's going to go on the street. And we're going to get rid of some things. And I just want a simpler life. I just have this vision I, I have a vision of living in a house that's just a little more open, airy, you know, like I love the plants and the colorful rugs and pillows and the, you know, I have like the little, um, oh, I'm tangled up in the, you know, on the windowsill, I have the little rocks and this, the shells. And I mean, I like that, but I want less stuff stuff. Like with my books, I want to keep the books that I always go back to and read and refer to. But there's a lot of fictional books that I have no desire. I will never read them. So why would I hold on to them when someone else out there is, is going to read them? Um, and I have um, 
I don't want to go through the clothes. I don't. I already went through the clothes and I actually just built up a beautiful wardrobe and I really like it and I don't want to get rid of anything right now. And I always have regrets when I do. So I'm not touching my wardrobe. I'm not touching the kids' wardrobe. I already went through it. <clears throat> and, um, or Bollies. I don't touch Bollies because it makes them mad. There's a couple shirts. I'm like, this truly is like a dust rag now. And if he agrees, then it becomes a dust rag. But there's um, a lots of tchotchke that's for some reason. Like, why do I have so much tchotchka or tchotchke? Why do I have, you know, why do I have all these books that I'm never even going to read? And why do I have these art supplies that we're never going to use, you know? Like, let's just downsize it to what we're really using and needing. And the idea is to downsize, simplify, create more room and space. And then, um, so that I can focus on what matters. And what matters is obviously my family, number one, and my home, having a wonderful, clean, lovely, airy home. And, you know, and cooking. I'm doing so much cooking. So a lot of cooking from scratch. So I need a clean kitchen and I need to kind of figure out my kitchen too. I'm going to downsize and organize that. And um, I'm going to take a lot of stuff to the food bank. I have all those little Mylar bags from that prepper guy. I We're not going to go through all those. And I just cooked up some beans the other day. It kind of scared me because I had dumped his bags into my buckets of nice beans and it took a long time to cook those beans so i'm like i don't know if maybe even in the mylar bags they're a little bit too old so i'm going to take most of it to the food bank and um and then and then focus you know focus on the cooking and focus on a lot of bulk batch cooking so that I have more time. And then I just want, I don't want it. I am gonna start doing like huge shops and huge batch cooking because I don't wanna do that all the time either. I'm kind of not in the mood right now. I love homemaking and cooking, but I'm not so much in the mood right now because I wanna play. I want to read a lot. I have a lot of books to read and I want to write and I want to swim with my kids and I want to do more things like where Sam and Molly and I, you know, Mariah's not always interested, but maybe she will be now, um, where, you know, we just go into the forest. Like we simply can just go over across the road and we're in a forest trail. I, we are so fortunate. We have forest trails down this way and then in back of us, we have forest trails and they're taken care of. They're like actually owned by the government. They are official parks. They have rangers. They clear trails. They, you know, maintain things. They keep the homeless out because we have a forest over here that I used to love and it was beautiful and intense. It had like this intense energy, but there are homeless that keep going in there and some are harmless and fine but some are not some are like kind of scary looking and they're junking it up and it's like it's just been impossible to keep up with and so I don't like going there because I don't like I used to clean it up I the whole family we used to go there and clean it up and post signs and and then it just got old. It's like, it is, if everyone in the neighborhood was like monitoring and keeping them out and keeping it cleaned up, it'd be great. But nobody else participated. Well, I think everybody at some point did. And then it just is like, it's not working. So, but I have beautiful trails to go on that are maintained, officially maintained, have rangers. I love rangers. And sometimes police on bikes. I love it. I'm like, keep it clean. So we have all these parks and we have this pool and we have books and we have the library. Like we have, cause I was like, well, we're gonna miss it. No, you're gonna fill it up. Whenever you get rid of something small or big, be it a relationship or an addiction to TV or drugs or booze or gambling, I don't know. Whenever you get rid of it and overcome that addiction, not only is it empowering, 
but it also, you fill up that space with positive. I mean, you have to be careful and do it because it, that space, you open up a huge space and it will fill up. Spaces don't like to be empty for very long. It will fill up. So you have to make sure and fill it up with good stuff. So say you quit doing drugs, right? Or drinking. Then you have a whole thing where you work on your spiritual program, you heal your past, you do your inner reflective work, and you accumulate new friends and situations and work and places that are all wholesome and support this sobriety. You quit TV and the internet and all the social media, you go out there, you go for hikes, you go swimming, you go to the river, you go to the movies, you go out to the movies. You hang out with friends, you have barbecues, you read all day, you fill it up with all these like real life. And TV does get addictive. It's really addicting. And they even, I saw this little video this morning when I was working out, I watched a video that really cinched it for me. And he was saying, I don't know, some monk or something. And he was saying it's a, as addictive as drugs and gambling. And it just, if you want to be overweight and unhappy and not doing anything, get a TV, plug it in. And it is true to a point. I mean, some people are good at just watching a little TV and some people, but what happens is you become so cozy in that world. Like you watch TV and you live through other people and you um, live in those worlds and you get so comfortable and safe that you don't have any need to really go out and do stuff. You've got your TV and your popcorn. And I kind of felt like that sometimes because I can be very hermity and where I'm like, well, I feel safer at home, you know, because sometimes the energy out there is weird. Like you, I always have good experiences out there in the world, but there are times when I go out and I'm like, it feels weird today. It feels weird and creepy today. And I rush home and I don't feel safe till I'm on my street. And then at home, I feel super sheltered and safe. And then I bury myself in like YouTube videos or TV or series. And I can be very addictive. Oh my goodness. When I watch The Walking Dead, I mean, I did nothing but watch The Walking Dead. I mean, I did laundry and stuff and I fed everybody. I fed my family. But I was like, I watched and watched and watched until, and the only time I took a break is because when I ordered the last two seasons, whoever had it was taking forever. So then I had to take a break, but then we were back on. So that's where we're at. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm going to go cook now. I'm going to go cook. I'm going to listen to my radio and I'm going to go make some... We can make nachos with all our plant-based stuff, or I can make burritos. Oh, maybe I'll do that because I've got rice, i got beans, i got Kiki's cheese sauce, I made salsa, I have sour cream. I need some other tortillas. i got to go to the store. I've got a little cash on me. I'm gonna, That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to W-A-L-K down to the store down in town and get some regular tortillas because I can make my tortillas but that I need a certain kind sometimes that's like my big processed junk food now anyway bye we are going through uh oh well, look at who we have here look at who we have here mm. look at this cute little oh oh you want to play I know you want to play so I'm going to keep Things like this, like the Emotional Thesaurus, a writer's guide to character expression, nutritional healing. Oh God, we do not get rid of these wonderful books. And then I have notebooks. But then we have this. What is this? This is Webster's New World Dictionary of the American Language. Well, we'll keep that. That's a classic, but I'll put that up on the shelf. Um, Leo Tolstoy. Anna. <coughs> Anna Karenina, I actually ordered the movie. I don't want to read it. I just don't. I know it's a classic, and I just ordered the movie with what's-her-name-in-it. 
um, but I don't want it. Harvard Classics, The Five Foot Shelf of Books, Sacred Writings, one. Um, it's not into that either. Amy Tan, The Bone Setter's Daughter. Now, this is also a very good book. So I've heard. Don't want to read it. Just don't want to read it. Just not into it. I mean, I know it's a good book. I know it's like considered a classic, I think. Oh, we will not care. These are Shakespeare. This is the Shakespeare stories. And these are kind of watered down for little kids. They're really cute. Bringing Shakespeare to today's children. And so we have these, and I love them. I read all of these to the kids. King Lear, see, it's got weird little sketches, and it's just a simplified story. I actually have the classics, too. I have a big book filled with all of his original plays. Not original, well, you know what I mean. Okay, so we're going to save all those. We're going to definitely save. And I have a lot of wonderful, like um, Jane Austen, A Life, Claire Tomlin. I love Claire Tomlin. She wrote about Samuel Pepys, which I'm still working on that book. Believe it or not, I love that book. I'm curious to see what she's going to do with this because there's really not a lot about Jane Austen. There were no letters found, no journals. They were all either destroyed or she didn't have them. The Vitamin Bible, Ralph, Ru Wolf. Ralph Waldo Emerson, I am going to keep that. And then I have all these. My folks, I love these books. Mama's in the kitchen. Now, I haven't made any of these recipes, okay? But I love these books. I love looking through them. I love reading the stories. That's really all I have these books for. Log Cabin Cooking, I love these books. Do I make the recipes? No, I don't. I should. Early American cookery. I just love the books. Someone got me. One of you bought me some of these books and it started. That was an addiction. Then I got on there and bought every single book they had. And then this I'm going to save because it's Grimm's Fairy Tales. So that we don't get rid of that. Look at Molly. <laughs> she's just she's so cute. You just listen to everything Mama says, huh? You just love listening to Mama. And this is a coloring book. We love the coloring books. So these are just coloring books. And here's screenwriting tricks for authors, Stealing Hollywood. Um, I, this one's okay. And then there's another one, a screenwriting Bible that I am super into and start working from that I love. But it's getting lost in all the books and the stuff. Now, here's some other. Here's another big pile. So, I love these. Herbal Healing. I do read and love these books. Oh, see? And everybody's fighting. The Women. Okay, this is the Old West. The Women. And I kept this. Um, and this is... Hold on. All right. Hi, right, come here. Come here. No way. What's going on? Okay, this one's great. Rebel Gardening. Okay, he has a YouTube channel. I think it's called Spicy Mustache. Anyway, he is wonderful. And his book is wonderful. And his channel is wonderful. And he's really into no waste, zero waste. And I think he's plant-based. I think. He seems to do a lot of plant-based stuff. But I don't watch him enough. This one, one of you bought me this book and I still have it and I love it. It's more for big, big farming, but I have learned a lot. And I started doing compost tea and a lot of stuff because of this book. Oh, she's gonna lie there, she's gonna lie there. She says, I'm gonna lie here until you're done with all your books. I'm gonna lie here until you're done with all your books. And then you're gonna pay attention to me because I'm so cute. And I am your world. How not to die. Oh, God. Where are all these books? Sorry, Molly. Okay. Boy. Boy. Okay. This is a journal. We'll keep that. This is kind of a really cute journal. Wait. Oh, I wrote a whole list of 
how it was going to be. It's strawberry custard. Oh, yeah? Okay. I out last time I didn't like it because I didn't add sugar. Oh, these are depressing to read. We got to get rid of this. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of that, too. We're going to get rid of these lists. Stop making lists. Save, save the Cat writes a novel. This one, I have the one for the screenwriting, and then this. And I do read all these books. Oh, here's a little card someone gave me a million years ago. Shirley. Oh, this is cute. I keep a lot of the cards that are really cute. And sometimes I frame them. I have all these frames, and I like to frame them and put them up. The Alter Ego. I almost finished it. It's not that good. I bought this book because you could not find it. And it's it's okay. It's not as good as everyone raved and raved and raved about it. I got this book by accident. And I got this book by accident, and I fell in love with her writing writing down the bones and i ordered oh i know how i got it i got it free off thrift books because why did i get it free oh because i had ordered enough books off thrift books so they gave me a free book right so i love her oh here it is the screenwriter's bible this is so good i am not very far into it well, as you see, I've annotated the heck out of it. But I am not that far into it, and I swear I feel like I've already taken a whole semester on screenwriting. And that's the other thing. I bought myself Final Draft, which is a screenwriting program. And I started writing a screenplay. But now I'm too busy watching TV. Now oh, here's our... I just have a ton of these. Tons and tons and tons of these. It's ridiculous. I don't even know what is where... Oh, so that's what those are. Those are, I love you. 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 Um, this one's kind of fun. I love these kind of books. This is the Martha Stewart Simple Home Solutions. So these are all going to stay. Yeah, they're going to stay. And I'm trying to see if this is the one where I wrote down that prayer that wealth affirmation look at there's a budget oh god i've written the budget down so many times but it's gone down it looks like it used to take three thousand dollars for us a month and now we are down to we can we can live off about 2600 so we're doing good not that we like to live off that. And sometimes we live off more, definitely more. Well, I'm not finding it. Oh, Brothers Green Eats. Remember that channel? It's no longer. But you can still find. Hmm. Lentil loaf, chocolate chip, something. Brothers Green Eats. Okay, so there you have it. Now we have to go to the other. Three, two, one, on my mask here. Oh, now we have to go to the other shelving units and purge. And I'm going to take this and put it on the street. Oh! Sam's making the rest of the pierogies. We have leftover pierogi stuff, and we're making pierogies. And these pears that I sliced up, well, first of all, we didn't get a lot of them. And they don't taste that good, but it turns out Molly likes them. So I'm gonna put them in a jar and save them for her to chew on. It'll be Molly treats. Dry pears for Molly. Oh, I got distracted. That makes me crazy when people are calling to me, calling to me. My husband keeps calling to me. I got distracted and burnt my pierogi. I had to go outside, he's trying to build a new hummingbird. So I hang the hummingbird Oh, that one didn't really work out, did it? I have the hum hummingbird feeder up, but it's leaking all over the deck, which is not good. And so we're going to move it. But I'm not really crazy about what he's building. I just thought maybe a nice little 
wooden post with a little hook and he's doing like, I don't know, I don't know, you know, men and tools and stuff. See, like these are all golden and lovely and these wound up burnt because, there we go, that's okay. <clears throat> You can't, when you're cooking, you can't be distracted and you can't leave your cooking. See? So then you get weird burnt pierogies. Anyway, this is the last of them. I made quite a few yesterday. And then I got tired of making them. So they're a little bit big and crazy. Whoops, uh-oh. Oh. oh. Okay, I gotta be careful. Everything's coming out. Oh, I don't know what's happening. You can't see it because it's kind of blurry, but he's got two ugly posts and then the wood part's nice. And then I don't know, let's hope. I just want my birds to find them because they're used to the porch and that's what they're used to. So I hope they find it over there. And I hope I remember to change it out frequently. My poor little birdies. And I'm telling you, I need some chickens. I need some chickens. I think like after harvest time, chickens are great because you just get them in your garden and they eat everything. All the bugs, all the weeds, every, I mean, they just really clean it up. I don't want chickens, but I do want chickens. I was pulling up weeds today. I pulled up some weeds and I'm kind of preparing some sections so I can plant. But I'm having the worst luck with potatoes. So some potatoes started growing, some just died. I don't know. And I have earwigs again, like crazy. But I looked it up. Earwigs can be really beneficial and they can also be not beneficial because they eat all your starts, tender starts, but they also eat a lot of bad bugs and eggs and um, eat a lot of rotten matter. That's why they're so thick in the compost. So they eat up stuff, they eat up the rotten matter and old stuff. I don't know. Okay, look at these. I'm gonna have some of these with some cheese sauce. Some of Kiki's cheese sauce. I better go get it. But anyway, we did some more work in the garden today and I've been purging. We got salsa, we got sour cream too. You can have sour cream. I'm gonna, oh, that's looking a little crusty. That's okay. We'll add a little more clean stuff to it. Put it in a fresh bowl, heat it up. All right. And we have some more pierogi. So this is cheese and it's mashed potatoes with cheese. But I'll fry those up in the morning. I'll mix some eggs in there and I'll fry them up in the morning. I am getting, I feel like I did hit the food bank a couple times, but like I said, it was kind of weird stuff. But with a little bit of money and the food bank, I have been able, and our dried stuff and canned stuff, which is all pretty much the same thing, grains and beans, I have been able to um create all kinds of i mean we've been eating pizza and pierogies and i've got lots of stuff for burritos oh that's right i was gonna go get tortillas what happened to that idea i don't know i don't want you to look at my oh you can't see in my microwave it's really gross look at my hair i'm like what happened i don't know what happened it's crazy i was working out in the garden i was talking to you guys and then I worked on my books and then I went out in the garden because Bali wanted to show me because he's always building crazy things. And, and then I started, I had to help him. The tomato plants are already so big. Oh, let Molly in. The tomato plants are already so big and they're producing huge tomatoes. It's just crazy. It's wonderful because what it means is our soil is so healthy now. 
The first few gardens we planted, nothing really came up. And then they started coming up, but they would produce little things like tiny, tiny bell peppers, like Barbie bell peppers, so doll sized tomatoes. And then we just kept compost and horse manure, compost and horse manure. And um, horse, I don't care what anyone says, horse manure. I think most people agree it's like gold. I learned that from Novella Carpenter. She wrote a book called Urban Farm, City Farm, Urban Farm, who knows. Anyway, <clears throat> when we did it at the little place, our things weren't growing. And once we started adding manure, things started growing. Now this yard, I think has seen a lot of car repair, probably oil changes. I mean, that's all it used to just be a big lot. Come here, Molly. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm gonna save this hat. I got this free off the street. I'm gonna save this hat for my trip. Cause it doesn't squish my hair. My hair is very fine. And so I don't, if I can't wear hats cause once I wear a hat, it's like an all day affair because then my hair is all squished and flat. But this will be perfect. What was I saying? What was I saying? I'm eating the progies. They are so big and hearty. I mean, they are like gut bombs. <laughs> mm. Oh, they're good gut bombs. Especially with that Kiki's cheese sauce. Although, I have real cheese in there. I would veganize everything, but the fam, the fam ain't so damn with it. So it's okay. We just, they are okay with being mostly vegetarian. So, and I usually get myself vegan sauces and stuff, but man, we're getting clever with the food. I was kind of feeling sorry. I was like, oh, we have nothing but rice and beans. But then just a little bit of this and that, you know, a little onion, lime, this, that, boom. You got sauces, you got cheese sauces, you got burritos, you got pierogies, you got pizzas. I mean, people go out and spend money to buy pizzas, pierogies, and, and burritos. We're making it here, live, cheap, free. <sighs> what the heck was I saying? Anyway, I got earwigs like crazy in my garden. Azalea, um, let me show you Azalea wet. Azalea's wet. I wanna show you a few people. Now, if I was really clever with my editing, I am not, I am doing some fun things and enjoying it tremendously, but I'm not that skilled. And I see people putting things up on the top or they will, be talking about a channel and then they'll flip you'll see you'll go straight to that channel it's almost like you're there scrolling and I know those are screenshots I should play around with that I can do oh what anything good the briar patch oh. so <clears throat> that actually I can do I can't do it on here you know I have this PC and really the PC is just for writing this little Mac is doing all kinds of wondrous things. So I could probably do a screenshot on a Mac, but I have to call my friend all the time. I'd be like, how do I do this? Like yesterday I had a whole list of things. I'm like, okay, how do I do this? Cause she's actually a professional editor. And if I could afford her, she's always offered, but I just don't, people have offered to edit my books and edit this and that for free. And there's no way. If you're gonna take the time I, I couldn't, no, I pay. I pay for it all. But I wanna show you, I know most of you know Azalea. But I wanna show her again, cause she is so inspiring. Oh wow, I typed in Azalea's way. Oh, maybe she's. Okay, hold on. 
We're having technical difficulties. Okay, she changed her name. She used to be Way Crunchy. That's what we knew her as. And now she's Azalea's Way, but you have to put in that little comma or whatever. You have to type it in just that way or you get a whole nother, like an Asian channel with flower planting. Anyway, this, I have known her for a long time. I found her channel around the quarantine and I just love her. She's got her Southern accent or Virginia accent and she's just down home and funny and sweet. And she has a great story. Anyway, she, if, check her out. She has, um, let me show you some other channels too because I don't know how to do a screensaver yet. We're gonna do it the old fashioned way. Um, <clears throat> she, has a story about living the high life. Like she was married and they had a big fancy house and then they had another big house. It was like a vacation house or a rental house. I don't know, I've heard her stories in little bits and parts. You know, I don't have the attention span that you guys do. So, but stuff happened. There was a lot of, I guess, like um, corrupt stuff that her husband was doing. I'm not sure, but things weren't being run right. And they wound up having to file bankruptcy for everything and foreclosed, lost everything. And she wound up like down to zero. She was divorced, um, living in a tiny, funky little house. If you look at her old videos, You'll see where, you know, it's just her and her two kids living in a funky house and everything's thrifted or free. And I don't know what she was subsisting on. That's maybe she shares that. Maybe she doesn't. I don't know if she was on government assistance or what. I have no idea. <clears throat> um, but I remember her living in this kind of shabby little place, but she kept it clean and she got her little free furniture and her free stuff and she was happy. And one time her washing machine broke down and she was washing her clothes in the tub forever. I remember my washing machine, I call it the possum because it plays dead sometimes, just stopped working. We never fixed it. We never did anything. It started working again, but stopped working and we thought it was dead. And, um, I started washing things in the tub. And at first I was like, this is so fun. And it reminds me of my great grandma and, and all the pioneering books and the depression era books I've read. And now I'm one of those women scrubbing and a dubbing. And I was scrubbing in the tub, washing my clothes. And then we started getting to things like jeans and sheets. And I was like, this is not working for me. But then our real, this realtor I worked with, you know, I'd worked with her several times and I worked with her to sell our home down in the valley. She texted me out of the blue and said, I have a washer and dryer if you want it. I guess she was clearing out one of her rentals and she didn't know, I didn't, I hadn't talked to her in years. No, maybe a year or so, a couple years, who knows. But I don't even, I didn't even know I still had her number out of the blue. So we kept the washer stored in the little shed thing. And we do have, and the dryer works great. I love the dryer. Um, but the washer started working again. The minute it was threatened by another replacement, it started working. And, but what I do is I unplug it sometimes and then plug it in. And now it works great. I'm like, really? I don't know what that was about. A test, a relationship problem. I don't know. So she, but she did it forever until she finally had a washer because that's just how it was. She didn't have the money to just go out and, and, um, <clears throat> she, she's just a character. And then she met a man and then they bought, um, a, a condemned, I think. And I was just watching her this morning. They bought a condemned house and for $20,000 and they started to work. They didn't know what they were doing, but they worked on it. And yes, she did have to hire someone to do plumbing and electric. It had no plumbing, no electric, and they needed a contractor. And she talks about that too, um, but they had to scratch everything out and they did it. But she now lives 
mortgage free. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. Who? Do you know how wonderful that is to know that you're always going to have a shelter and you have no mortgage? And yes, you will always have to pay insurance and taxes. I don't know if you have to pay insurance, but you do have to pay taxes. But if you buy a house cheap enough, especially for $20,000, I can, even if the value property value goes up, I can tell you it's not going to you're not going to be paying that much. Like if you break it down monthly, what is it? Like $20? Our house, if when we pay off the mortgage, our combined insurance and, see insurance over here is really horrific because we are in Northern California in the forest, so it's a fire zone. So buying a house like out in the forest or even out of town a little bit, some people's insurance is so expensive. It's like over a thousand dollars a month. I, I don't know how they pay it, but anyway, I found a good insurance company and we are in town and there's a fire hydrant right in front of our house so it made all the difference I, that's why i love this house it's constantly like surprise surprise like good surprises like i bought it i was like it's an ugly house but it's got a porch and it's got a lot and then it's like it just like here's another gift here's another gift like it's solidly built it's insulated there's a fire hydrant. So our insurance is low. So taxes, I figured it out that taxes insurance, I think would be like three or $400 a month. So once we pay off the mortgage, that's all we're paying. And you could even do it with taxes. Like if we're still getting tax returns, I don't know. Cause once you pay off your house and then your kids grow up and then I have capital loss taxes for my mother's property but those you know it seems like a lot but we're going through it i mean they grant me so much every tax return i get a little chunk but it's going fast but if i even get just that i can pay for the whole year of taxes and insurance and then you don't have anything but even if you break it down monthly and pay monthly which i don't know if you can but even if you do um you know, you could work like a couple weekends at the grocery store, bagging groceries and have it covered, you know? So that is wonderful. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'll give you a little taste. Yeah, I know. Many of you are thinking that's why she begs, Kate. Okay, let's find someone else. Hold on. This is another one of my professional filming. Um, for writers, Alexa Dunn, gives a lot of great advice there. Okay, and Alexandra Roslin, she is a booktuber. I haven't really connected with some of her choices, but I love watching her. She is, she does very happy, upbeat, fun videos where she doesn't just talk about books. She goes out for coffee and she does this and that. And she goes book shopping and I don't know, it's just kind of like a fun day out. Andrew Bernard is plant-based cooking channel and he is good. Azalea, I just talked about her. She is wonderful. She's got a great story. Frugal renovation, all that. Becoming a farm girl, she is really good too. She plants all her food on her deck and she makes everything from scratch and cans everything. And she lives, I think in a condo with a, just a big deck, but boy, <clears throat> she makes it happen. I love her and she also um, has one video where she shows you how to make all her, um, all these kinds of cereals like grape nuts. I gotta watch that because I, I have a lot. You can make grape nuts from um, still cut oats. So she did this one vlog where she made all kinds of store-bought cereal. I like that. And then Ben P. Grace, he lives in, his, he's a recovering alcoholic. And he lives in his car and does all kinds of hustling gigs. Gig worker, car life, minimalist. Well, you'd have to be in your car. Yeah, I was trying to clean my lens, but my whole thing's dirty. Anyway, but he's really positive and fun to watch. And he makes it look so easy and fun living out of a car. But we all know it can't be that fun and easy all the time. I love her, Carly Bodrug. She does a lot of plant-based. <clears throat> 
Caroline Winkler. I think she's she does. Oh, I don't know. I've been getting new ones, and we know Sensible Mom, Sensible Living with Money Mom, chickpeas and lentils. She is plant based. City is nature. This is a super positive. Um, there's my finger, finger bombing, finger. Um, oh, no, it won't show. Hold on. Okay, City is Nature is very positive and shows how a lot of cities and neighborhoods are making their spaces super lush and green and closing off streets and riding more bikes and walking. It is a growing trend and it is something to rejoice. Okay, Create with Linda. I found her recently. I found her the other day and um, I don't know, she struggles with some stuff, but she's fun. <clears throat> she seems kind of fun, so I keep, hold on, let me drink some water. I only watched her a little bit, but she cooks and she's just kind of real and, and um, down to earth, so we can try her out. Daily inspirations are just that, daily inspirations. I think I saved it because there's probably Dr. Joe Dispenza and lots of speakers like that. Derek Sarno, love him. He does a lot. He's the one who wrote with his brother, Wicked Kitchen, and they do a lot of wicked sauces. And um, he's plant-based and he does amazing cooking. A little too complicated for me. EEC Travel. They do a lot of cruise ship stuff, so I love watching them. Oh, Eternal Eclipse Music, the best, especially if you're a writer. Um, Euphonic Alchemy, I think that's music. Evil Food Supply. Fairy Soul, I just found her the other day too. And she's she's kind of fun and she suffers. She's autistic. You don't suffer autism. Sorry, she is autistic. She's an adult. With, she's a autistic adult. And so I liked watching her and she is a little bit of a hermit and, you know, she's just soulful and very sweet. So film courage for all you writers and movie makers. 50 sister, Gail, she turned her life around in her 50s. <clears throat> That's a, that one's kind of a religious or spiritual, they analyze some of you, if you're Christian, you might not like it. So don't, just skip it. I like that stuff. Halidon Music, more music. Happen Films, that's all about green living. Okay, Happen Films is just, I really, it's just all about all these people. I've seen most of these and I love them. They're just stories about all these people who are going green and living simple and yeah, straw bale house built by couple over four years and how this zero waste couple have lived without rubbish bin for eight years and just incredible stuff on here. Let's go back. Okay, healthy eating, healthy vegan eating. He is, <clears throat> where's my arrow? There it is. There's my finger. He looks, his dishes look delicious. I haven't tried them yet. But they're simple, healthy. I mean, his food is so healthy. If you're dealing with any kind of illness or whatever and you have to be plant-based, I would go and watch his channel and you will learn how to cook amazing, clean food. Heart Breathing, she's a writer. Sarah Cannon, love her. High Carb Hannah, we all know her. Honey Scribbles, I just like the little TikTok writing ones. Inkwell Media. Okay, hold on. These are not, and some of these, I think, who's that? Why, why do I have her? Professional organizer. Well, Kevin Lee Jacobs. I love him. He's so classy. He just cooks and puts on little parties and cleans his 200-year-old house. Um, live it like Lauren. Locks Library. Love her stuff. She annotates and everything. Okay, Mama Bard. This is a good one. If you have a family or even just a couple of you, there's just you and your partner um, and you are on a budget. This, she, I found her the other day and she looked like a lot of fun and she does a lot of recipes and I'm trying to find my, she does a lot of recipes and she works from, sometimes she has to supplement at the food bank and I, there's just so many of us. I mean, people who own their homes, that's why. 
Got to pay off that home. Well, this isn't showing all her fun videos, but she's got a lot. There we go. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to show you.